You are listening to the IoT for All Media Network. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the IoT for All podcast on the IoT for All Media Network. I'm your host, Ryan Chacon, one of the co-creators of IoT for All. Now, before we jump into this episode, please don't forget to subscribe on your favorite podcast platform or join our newsletter at iotforall.com slash newsletter to catch all the newest episodes as soon as they come out. One of the last things I wanted to mention before we jump into this episode is that our wonderful partners, Calchip Connect, are excited to be leading the way in the IoT space helping to drive digital transformation and decentralized open source wireless technology. A decentralized network is a community managed network offering public wireless services to IoT developers and consumers in exchange for valuable cryptocurrency. This new wave of connectivity is growing at an explosive rate. Early adopters are exploring new ways to utilize the internet. It's time to move away from the aging infrastructure and embrace a peer-to-peer model. Decentralized wireless has momentum and is here to stay. So please check out calchipconnect.com. That's C-A-L-C-H-I-P-C-O-N-N-E-C-T.com. So without further ado, please enjoy this episode of the IoT for All podcast. Welcome, Greg, to the IoT for All show. Thanks for being here this week. Thanks, Ryan. Happy to be here. Yeah, it's fantastic to have you. I'm looking forward to this conversation. And I wanted to start off by um, having you just give a quick introduction to our audience, you know, just so they can get some more information on who they're listening to. So any background information, anything about your experience, uh, kind of what brought you to order that kind of thing would be great. Sure thing. Yeah, I've been here at uh, Order now for just about three years. Um, I've spent most of my career uh, for the past 20 years or so working in the networking security space, first in in wireless and then moving to a, a company called Aruba Networks that was in the, the Wi-Fi space and then for the, the past three years at Order. So I've been spending my, my career figuring out how to connect devices to, to networks and how to make sure that those devices are secure. That's awesome. And now speaking of Order, let's talk a little bit more about what Order does, um, kind of the overall kind of I guess, offering to the market, kind of you know what your role in IoT is, that kind of thing. Sure thing. So Order is a, we're a cybersecurity company and our role is to protect connected assets in enterprises. So, you know, large hospitals, you know, big, you know, manufacturing systems, you know, enterprise. And you know, our particular focus is the literally billions of agentless endpoint devices that are being installed in enterprises that do not or or cannot have any software agents installed on them to provide security. So a lot of those devices are what you think of as the the classic IoT building system facilities devices, OT devices. They can be specialized medical devices in in hospitals like the the MRI machines. Uh, But our job is to make sure that whoever that organization is, that enterprise, has visibility and control, that they know what's connected to their network and that they have a way to secure mm-hmm. those devices. And talking more about kind of some use, use cases or, uh, you know, basically bringing this full circle for our audience to better understand kind of what kind of applications you're involved in and how your technology is being used out in the world. Do you mind elaborating a little bit more on that? Sure, absolutely. You know, the, the big problem that we, we encounter when we start you know, talking to, to enterprises is that very few of them actually really know what's connected to their their networks. I mean they they may have tools that show them all the, the IP addresses of the devices. But if you really sit down with a, a CISO and say, how confident are you that you could actually identify every mm-hmm. device connected to your network? I have never ever had a CISO say, I am truly confident that I, I can do that. And that the big challenge is that most of the CISOs and most uh, IT organizations have a pretty good understanding of the traditional IT devices, the the laptops, the tablets, the the mobile phones that are are connected in their environment because there have been decades of of tools and solutions built up to identify and and protect those devices. The the problem is that in any given enterprise right now, more than half of the devices don't look anything like that traditional, that the laptop, the the workstation, they are everything under the, the sun you know, from, as I mentioned, MRIs in hospitals, building management systems. I even you know, encountered a Bluetooth-enabled IoT toilet paper dispenser recently. So wow. truly, yeah. anything in the world can be can be connected. And that's scary because it means the attack surface is, is pretty large and, you know, the organizations don't really understand exactly what that attack surface looks like. And when you were mentioned a second ago, you said CISO. What does that mean for our audience, just so they know what you're talking about? 
Uh, sorry about that. Yeah, it's a chief information security officer, the, the Perfect. Man, or, man or woman who's ultimately responsible for securing whatever is connected into the, the enterprise environment. Fantastic. Okay. Um, I'd love if you could talk a little bit more from your all's point of view. How do you view the current state of IoT and connected device security as a whole? It's something that we've we've talked about device security on the podcast many times before, but I think you all have a very unique kind of um, perspective on kind of the, the, the connected device security landscape. And I'd love if you could just kind of connect that to how you view the industry as a whole um, at this current time, because I think, you know, one thing that is important for people to understand is that for organizations to truly see the benefits of digital transformation or you know IoT deployments that they're getting involved in, the devices that they're putting to capture the data need to be secure. If they're not, they're very vulnerable to obviously attacks and and just you know just general things that could happen to their business in a negative way. So just you know talk to me a little bit more about how you all view the market currently and how that you know and, and as well as elaborating on the connected device security state. Sure, it's a it's a great question. I, th- I think there's really been kind of an awakening to this this issue over the the past several years, and I think has really intensified in the the, the past twelve months. Um, because as as you mentioned, for years everyone has been talking about and seeing the the benefits of digital transformation, and that the reason that you deploy you know, IoT devices in your environment is because there's a business benefit. They're bringing you information control that you you couldn't otherwise have. It's going to make your business more efficient. And I think that it's really very recently that people have started to understand the level of security risk that comes along with those those business benefits. And right. I think in, in certain industries, there are some pretty galvanizing events. Like in healthcare, I would point to WannaCry of a few years ago, where all of a sudden you had you know hospitals that were literally being taken down and you had nurses that were going back to using you know, pencil and paper instead of right, their right. systems because, you know, these the, their devices were impacted. And frankly, they had so little visibility and control over those devices. They just had to run through the entire organization and just literally pull the plug on every on every connected mm-hmm. device so they could get mm-hmm. their hands around it. And I think those types of, you know, those types of incidents and, and recently we've we've all been reading and hearing an awful lot about ransomware and how that's been impacting, you know, oil pipelines and governments. I think it's really started to get people waking up to this. And it, it's also, you know, got the government starting to, to take notice where you see the you know, IoT Cybersecurity Improvement Act, and we see, you know, mandates and executive orders coming from the, the federal government. This is this right. is you know, being identified as one of the, the major vulnerabilities, you know, in our, you know, in the IT landscape right now and needs to be addressed. That makes a lot of sense. And then as we're kind of talking about the current state of connected device security, talk to me a little bit more about what makes devices at times difficult to secure or what are the challenges um, around device security given or in this current state? I mean, obviously, devices have come a long way. Security has come a long way. Um but there's still challenges and things that companies need to be thinking about. And when you're speaking with organizations, you know, what are you kind of in, uh, sharing with them are the challenges that these devices are currently experiencing and things they should be looking out for. And then, that, and then just that general advice for how organizations should think about securing their devices. Absolutely. I, I think that the, the challenge of securing devices, and if you, you focus specifically you know, on, on IoT and how they're mm-hmm. different, and maybe that the traditional IT is uh, the first thing is that a lot of these IoT devices really weren't designed with security in mind. They were okay. multi uh, thousands of different manufacturers. A lot of them, you know, still to this day are running pretty outdated operating systems. They and and very often, most often, they can't support a software agent to be put on the on the devices, which is the traditional response of IT if you're trying to protect a and, and control you know, a laptop as well, go put you know, a CrowdStrike agent on that. Device. Then you'll get visibility and control over it. That's right. not an option with, with IoT devices. And you, you compound that with the fact that for IoT devices, the service life of them can be you know, much, much longer than what you're, we're used to in the traditional IT world, where we assume sure. kind of technology is almost disposable every two or three years. I'm going to get a new laptop. You know, now in, in the, the world of, of IoT and OT, you know, a manufacturing system might be expected to, to last in place for you know, 12, 15 years, not, not two or three years. So you get lots of devices 
from different manufacturers, a lot of legacy devices. And frankly, they're being installed by and, and owned by lots of different groups within the enterprise, which means that you know it's pretty uncommon for an enterprise to have a really good asset inventory. It says, here are all of the things that we have that are connected to our environment. Instead, what you find are multiple different you know, databases, spreadsheets, manual inventories. And so that creates some pretty, you know, pretty big blind spots in, the, in organizations. And when we have gone into and work with customers, we usually find that there's at least a 15 to 20% gap between what we actually mm. see on the network versus what the organization thought was on the, the network. We see gotcha. devices that didn't know were there. We had devices right. that were connected that, that aren't there. And so that's a, that's a pretty big uh, hole in security. So you don't see it. If you don't know about it, it's awfully hard to, to secure it. And who is responsible for securing these IoT devices? And when I say that there's probably obviously it depends on which angle you're coming into this from but you know within an organization who's adopting IoT who's responsible on the outside of an organization is there somebody that's usually responsible is it the company that you know is supplying the devices is it the systems integrator you're working with to deploy the IoT solution who is you know who do you kind of look at as the responsible party for securing the devices making sure things stay kind of you know up to standard and so forth yeah. It's a it's a great question, and I would say that it's the answer has really been changing. And now I would say usually the buck stops with the chief information security officer. I mean, that's the okay. the person who is responsible for understanding what's connected to to the the network and making sure that those devices are secure, and frankly, making sure that the network is protected from from those devices. Um, that's a change because you know, historically. You used to have a pretty big divide between what we we called the the IT world, which was the responsibility of the the CIO and the chief information security officer, and the you know the OT or the IoT that might be owned right, in the right, facilities right, right. department or in a manufacturing company. It's you know, manufacturing operations, and then the used to the, the the assumption used to be these networks were kind of completely separate. We had, there's a phrase called an, an air gap, like what happens on the yep. OT network shouldn't be able to, to impact what happens on the IT network, what happens on the IT network shouldn't impact the, the OT network. Well, the problem is that just breaks down with digital transformation. The whole, the whole point of digital transformation is we're going to get insights into what's happening all across the business. We're going to tie these systems together. And so that the notion of an air gap I don't think is, is really that useful anymore. When you look at right. actual communications, you see you know, OT devices that are communicating to the, the corporate network and IT devices that are you know, impacting operations. In fact, the, the most recent, you know, the, the Colonial Pipeline incident that everyone read about in the front pages of the paper is just a, a couple months ago. And that was traditional IT estate, but was so critical to the operation that it was impacted and ended up shutting down the, the pipeline for, for several days. Mm. So there's this notion of, of separation that, hey, maybe there's going to be a different group that's going to be responsible for securing OT devices or IoT devices. Yeah, and that's going to be different from the, the rest of the IT estate. I think that's starting to, to break down and we're seeing that the, the chief information security officer at the end of the day is is ultimately the person that the the CEO and the, the board of directors are holding accountable for this. And what about when a company doesn't have that role uh, within their company, a smaller company, who's usually responsible or how does that kind of trickle down? You know, it, it usually ends up being in, you know, in smaller organizations. It's now moving more and more into the, the IT organization. So under the, the CIO, there might be a, you know, a director of security or head of cybersecurity uh, sometimes it's in you know in risk and compliance, but but more yeah. often than not, it's it's really coming down that this is a an IT responsibility because at the gotcha. end of the day, you know, board of directors and CIO needs to or CEO needs to know that there is someone that they can go to and say, give me an understanding of what is our strategy to protect you know our data and our assets, right. and they right having that you know having that responsibility be fragmented is increasingly hard to defend. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And, you know, with the, the Colonial Pipeline attack that we recently had, it's probably one of the biggest um, ransomware things in the news lately, at least one that I've paid the most attention to because it does affect where I live and the gas prices immediately skyrocketed. Gas stations did not have gas, which was something I've never experienced in my lifetime. Um, going to a gas station and everything saying they're out. 
Um, that, that's a mission I wanted to get an Uber while I was out there during that uh, attack. Yeah. Everybody was on the road. Yeah, or, no, I mean, lines were around the corner. And, you know, I had to use a gas, I think it's Gas Buddy or some kind of gas app where it basically told you which ones had gas at any given time, which I never had to use in my <laughs> before. But speaking of this ransomware, and because it's become more of a kind of hot topic uh, or popular topic because of what happened with, with the pipeline, I wanted to ask if you have no, or seen any new regulations or if you feel like regulations need to be put in place on the security of IoT, IoT devices to help protect from these kinds of things happening? Or do you think it's something that's just is, is very hard to cover all your bases um, and, and regulations can only do so much? Oh, absolutely. I think we are starting to see some you know, regulations. And I think that you know, the, the government and, and auditors are increasingly aware of just how much of a business impact something like ransomware can have where it can you know cause you know untold you know tens hundreds of millions of, of dollars of right. damage so you know we we have started to see things like the the federal government uh, starting to use its buying power saying that if you're you know IoT cybersecurity improvement act if you're going to sell to the federal government then your you know product is going to have to have certain security capabilities you know, mm. baked in or your or the federal market is going to be closed off to you so that yeah fair. that's a yeah. that's a lot of buying power that the the government has it will force you know the will force a lot of manufacturers to to come in line and i think that you're also seeing it in terms of kind of some of the the audits of the organization going out and enforcing standards like uh, cmcc which is you know turning to the manufacturing base and say you're gonna you're gonna have to show that you've got security controls you know, in place, you're gonna have to show that you know what assets are connected to your environment and that you've got the ability to to protect them. So I, I do think that there is a a role, and I I think it's great that the the government is is really finally stepping up and taking an act. But fundamentally, you know, this is the responsibility of every organization that is out there. There's you cannot rely on a manufacturer to a supplier. To do the right thing and just and make that your your sole line of defense. You as a as an organization have to take your destiny in your own hands and make sure that when you look at your network environment, you know what's connected, you know what vulnerabilities you know, are there. That you're taking basic measures like you know segmenting your your network mm-hmm. so that if you know if ransomware gets in, it can't spread like like wildfire across the the entire organization. Right. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. When you're speaking with organizations um, and your customers, do they have a lot of questions about or do they connect a lot of what they see in in the media um, with their own situation, their own use cases that you're helping them develop, um, you know, and handle the security for? Or is that something that is is not really a topic that you all find that comes up too often in, in conversations with customers? No, I, I think it does come up in conversations. I mean, you you cannot be in IT and uh, and security these and not be getting questions you know from yeah. your senior management from board about topics like ransomware. I mean, they, every sure. every member of a board of directors reads the Wall Street Journal and they they see you know organizations that are being impacted and the first thing they do is they you know click off of the the Wall Street Journal site and send a, an email saying hey could this happen to us? Yeah, you know, right, and, right. And the right. answer is of course yes it could. You know there's there's no organization that can insulate itself from the the possibility of of being attacked. I mean, there's so many sure. devices. And what really comes down to is what are the things that you are doing as an organization to protect your organization so that mm-hmm. you know, the, the ch- if, when something happens, when something gets in, that the the chances of it spreading are as you know little as possible, or it can the the way it propagates across the the network that you have controls in place to to prevent that. Um, and that you have the ability to to detect to to see once you know malware has gotten into your your environment to be able to see how it's moving we call laterally across the network and starting to right. spread and and that's something that I think that you know since we're we're talking specifically about IoT today there's a lot of organizations and a lot of people in the security world look at it and say well you know it's not usually the IoT devices that are the ones that are being attacked by the by the criminals, whether you know, ransomware and, and malware, and that that's actually true. There are very few de- uh, ransomware attacks that have started from you know, an IoT device. It's usually you know they a, a user based device. You know they get access mm-hmm. to someone's credentials, get into the network. But what what we see is that the IoT devices are very often 
collateral damage that yes. once, they, once they ransomware, once the malware is in the environment, it spreads like wildfire across the, you know, the organization. And that starts to impact all of these IoT devices. And because so many of them are vulnerable, like we talked about before, so many of them have legacy operating systems. Right, they, right, right. They become you know, very, very exposed. And, and frankly, a lot of these are pretty darn mission critical you know, functions. A, an access control, a badge reader in a, in a warehouse. Well, if your badge reader is not working, people aren't getting in and out of the, the warehouse. That's a, that's a problem for you. Right. So I think it's it's really kind of educating organizations to say they've got to look at the entire attack surface and that they the fundamental starting point is visibility. If you don't know right. what's connected, you don't know what you've got in your environment and you don't know what those devices do, then mm. you can't implement a security policy. And I would really put the emphasis when we talk to customers on that behavioral piece it is right. critically important that I know which 50, what 50,000 devices are connected in my environment. I also need to know what do those devices do? What, what does normal behavior look like? So I can say, okay, a, you know, a video surveillance camera in our environment normally does the following three things. It behaves in the following way because it's, it's that knowledge of the behavior that allows you to detect when something anomalous is happening. That you know, a security camera is suddenly starting to, to probe you know, the, the entire network. That's something that you, you don't typically see a security camera do. That's right. when all the alarm bells should start, should start ringing. So it's that combination of knowing what's connected and understanding their behaviors so that you can quickly detect and say, hey, something here does not look right. And then we better be able to take a, a fast action to, to protect against that, to stop the right. threat once it's in the environment. Right. It makes a lot of sense. Uh, before we wrap up here, I have a couple final questions I wanted to ask you. And some of this may be sort of connected to what we've already been talking about. But when you talk to customers, um, what are some of the biggest challenges that your customers have faced during their IoT security journey? And what advice do you usually give them to kind of handle those challenges? I think this would be something good for our audience, just, you know, whoever's out there kind of listening and looking to better understand the security aspects and to understand the security element of an IoT solution. I'm sure there are common uh, roadblocks, common challenges that most companies come across that you may be able to kind of help guide them around in this conversation. Um, so I'd love if you kind of elaborate a little bit more on that. Yeah, I, I think the, the advice that I would give, and I think consistent with some of the, the conversation we've been having, is, is really start with that question of visibility. Like, do you know what is connected in your environment? Because it's those gaps that can come back to, to, to bite you. And just a, an example, mm. one, of our, one of our customers um, you know, in the, the medical space, you know, had a, a pretty good you know, program in place. They were identifying what was connected to their network environment, but they found a parking lot gate, you know, an access control gate in there at their parking lot that had been installed by their facilities organization. They had absolutely no idea if that device was there. And they found okay. out, oh my God, that, that device you know, actually was infected with, with malware. It was the, the unknown device. Or recently, you may have read the, the news about the the solar gate, uh, the solar winds attack that impacted so many thousands of, of organizations. You know, right. had another customer that said, you know what, you know, great news. They came in that morning and said, wow, this is a, a really bad attack, but we don't have any solar wind servers. We don't use that product on our, on our network. And when they, they looked in our, our tool, they actually were able to show them, you've got a, a, a device that is connecting to that, you know, to a solar gate you know, destination. And what had happened is one of their you know, departments had actually brought in uh, brought in solar winds to do a pilot to do a, a test in their environment and that demo system had never been disconnected so they had absolutely no idea that they had solar winds in their environment until they started mm. to look and monitor the, the network and say wow wait a minute we do have a device that is is connecting to this destination that that's a problem for us so you right. start with a start with visibility and start with the understanding of behaviors then you can start to say, all right, now what do we do about it? How do we start to put policies in place? But if you don't have that fundamental building block, the rest of your security strategy is really built on quicksand. Fantastic. That's, that's great advice. Um, and and to, to, this may tie into it. It may be a little bit of a separate topic, but I know um, you all have a, uh, a report that, that has come out recently. And I wanted to see if you wouldn't mind sharing at least a taste of some of the highlights, kind of maybe what the overall purpose of the report was or is, and um, and kind of what you uh, learned from it from a highlight standpoint. 
Yes, we just uh, recently released our second annual kind of Rise of the Machines report, and that is designed to give organizations just insight on what's happening with connected devices and, and trends mm. and how they're they're being used. And so we we do this based on the experience that we've got working with you know, hundreds and, and thousands of, of organizations and tens of millions of devices. And just some of the, the things that we we saw is that you know this year uh, we saw almost 50% of the devices that are connected in an enterprise environment are what we call these agentless devices, the things that don't okay. look like traditional IoT. So the this attack surface is getting much, much bigger because organizations that don't have a, an endpoint security a strategy that goes beyond agent-based solutions have 50% of the devices represent exposure for them. I would also gotcha. say the, the other thing that we, we really highlight in this report is Probably the, the biggest risk or greatest risk right now among you know these IoT and OT devices are outdated operating systems. And that we found that almost 20% of our deployments, uh, 20% of, of environments have outdated operating systems like Windows 7, you know, decades old operating systems still running, still operating in those environments. And those are you know, devices that are not typically being patched that have you know, known vulnerabilities. That could be could be exploited, and that's a we we talk to organizations closing down and, and making sure that those devices you know, are protected. If they they can't be replaced, they can't be updated. How do you protect them and ensure that they don't represent a, a really big vulnerability for your organization? So those are just two of the yeah. the insights I thought were kind of most most interesting coming out of that rise of the machines report because both of those have gone up over the past couple of years. And where can our audience kind of can view the report or, or you know learn more about it? Sure. They just go to our, our website at www.order.net. That's O-R-D-R.net. Uh, they'll be able to go to the resources section and find that Rise of the Machines report. Okay. And is that the best way, best place also to find uh, ways to contact and reach out if they have questions after listening to this episode? Absolutely. Okay. And then Great. they can also, if they have questions, want to reach out, just uh, info, I-N-F-O at order, O-R-D-R.net. Uh, we'd be happy cool. to respond to any questions they've got. Okay, great. Well, Greg, this has been a fantastic conversation. I wanted to just see if there's anything on top of the report, anything coming out maybe in the in the next number of months that our audience should be on the lookout for, anything like that that um, you want to kind of plug now here at the end of the show? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I think one of the, the things that we're really focused on right now is you know, our making our solution even easier to use, incorporating you know, you know, threat insights from uh, multiple partners that we're working with. And so we're going to be having some pretty exciting new software releases that are coming up. Um, and so very uh, eager to share those with the, the market. So I would definitely ask them to, to reach out to us and we'd be more than happy to, to share and show them some of these exciting new capabilities. Mm. That's awesome. All right, Greg. Well, thanks again so much for your time. This information and, and the advice, kind of the insights you're sharing on the security front uh, regarding devices in the IoT space is great. I, I think our audience is going to find a lot of value out of this conversation. So, so thanks again for your time, and I'd love to have you back at some point in the future. Absolutely. Thanks so much, Ryan. Really enjoyed it, and uh, thank you for doing this. It's a great source of information for the for the for the community. Absolutely. Thank you so again. Talk to you soon. All right, everyone. Thanks again for joining us this week on the IoT for All podcast. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you did, please leave us a rating or review and be sure to subscribe to our podcast on whichever platform you're listening to us on. Also, if you have a guest you'd like to see on the show, please drop us a note at ryan.iotforall.com and we'll do everything we can to get them as a featured guest. Other than that, thanks again for listening and we'll see you next time.